The two primary forms of audio connections used in live sound and studio applications are balanced and unbalanced audio connections. That's what we'll be talking about in this video and at the end of this video I'll test both of them so we can hear how much of a difference one makes over the other when it comes to eliminating noise and external interference. To explain balanced and unbalanced audio connections, let's consider some of the standard cables and connectors used in live sound and in the studio. XLR, quarter inch TROS, quarter inch TS and RCA. The XLR and TROS support balanced audio connections, while the TS and RCA cables cannot. These are used for unbalanced audio connections and you'll know why in a bit. Unbalanced audio involves the use of a single conductor plus shield. The conductor carries the audio signal from the transmitting device, let's say the output of a microphone, to the receiver. The receiver in this case might be the input of a mixer or an audio interface. And then the shield connects to ground while also acting as the negative conductor. This is very straightforward. The problem with this type of connection, however, is that any noise or hum that is picked up by the cable will be added to the original microphone signal and will be amplified along with it by the mixer or audio interface. There are many ways noise gets introduced into an audio signal chain. The most common being from nearby electronic devices or radio waves and the chances of the cable picking up noise varies with the length of the cable. For this reason, unbalanced cables and connections are not recommended for long cable runs or in areas where electrical interference is a problem. Although the shield wire is theoretically supposed to protect the signal from being affected by radio frequency and electromagnetic noise, its effect is almost negligible in practice. A balanced audio connection involves using two conductors a positive and a negative and then there's a shield which connects to ground. The shield doesn't carry any signal at all and it's irrelevant in the cable's ability to form a balanced connection. The input of a balanced receiver is a differential amplifier which responds only to the difference between two signals and ignores any part of the signal that is the same in each conductor. What that means is that the signal that goes through the differential amplifier is the signal in the positive conductor minus the signal in the negative conductor. So if there's a signal in the positive conductor and nothing on the negative conductor, the signal goes through. This is known as a differential mode signal. If there is an identical signal in both conductors, they will cancel out at the differential amplifier and not go through. This is known as a common mode signal. The purpose of balancing, therefore, is to make the noise pick up equal in both conductors, which eventually leads to a common mode signal that can cancel out at the differential amplifier. Now, let's see how this works. If I connect this dynamic microphone, the AKG DCC0S, to an audio interface using a balanced XLR cable, the signal is carried by the positive conductor and is able to pass through the differential amp at the balanced input of the audio interface. Along the way, noise from nearby electronics or radio waves might be introduced into the signal. And because both conductors are the same size and occupy the same position, the noise pickup is equal in both wires. This common mode noise will be rejected by the balanced impulse while the original microphone signal is unaffected. Now for some other microphones or audio devices, the output signal is carried on both conductors. The signals on each conductor are at the same level, but they are of opposite polarity. One signal is positive when the other is negative. While this has the added advantage of producing a stronger signal at the balanced impute, it is not at all necessary to establish a balanced connection because the noise cancellation will still occur even if only one conductor carries the audio signal. This cable is 25 meters long. I'll be adding XLR connectors to it and using it with the microphone to test how much of a difference a balanced connection makes over an unbalanced connection, especially over a long distance. First, we connect it in an unbalanced configuration by connecting only pins 1 and 2 of the XLR connector, after which we'll add pin 3 to the connection to establish a balanced configuration. Let's check it out. Now this is what this setup sounds like when configured as an unbalanced connection. Now this is what this setup sounds like when configured as a balanced connection. In my next video, I'll be answering your questions and I just made a community post asking you guys to send me questions about live sound mixing and setup that you'd like me to answer in that video. So if you have any question, please head on to the community section of my channel and reply to that post with your question. If you happen to be seeing this video one week after it's posted, then that video should be out already and you can watch it right here. Thank you for seeing this video. I'm Kelvin. I'll see you in the next one.